Hey there, Detroit sports fanatics, and welcome to this week's Tigers edition on Taylor's Detroit Sports Show on Blog Talk Radio. I'm Taylor Phillips. Questions of the night. Have you had enough of Joe Nathan after last night in Game 2? Or are you sticking with him still after how he rebounded today? Do you think Drew Smiley will continue to show his magic like he did in today's contest? How do you feel about the home run derby? Is it still fun to you or not? I know it doesn't mean anything, but it doesn't mean it's not fun. I'll get to that a bit later in the show. The number to call to voice your opinion is 646-478-4837. That's 646-478-4837. But I want you to support your opinions with explanative details. Find me on Facebook, YouTube, Google, and Pinterest as Taylor Phillips. Like my Facebook page, Taylor Phillips' Detroit Sports page. And join my Facebook group, Taylor Phillips' Detroit Sports Group, to become a more educated, serious, and loyal Detroit sports fan. And follow me on Twitter and Tumblr at DT2Phillips. There's also a chat window on Blog Talk Radio on all my episodes of Taylor's Detroit Sports Show for you to comment on with your opinions. Guidelines, if you have called in, stay on the line. If you hang up and redial the number and then stay on the line. Also, keep it clean. Don't say anything silly and don't go anywhere out of line. This is a serious talk show. And and we want you to uh, just s s stay cool and and bright. Number to get number to call again is 646-478-4837. First off, uh, let, me, let me wish Mike Illich his 85th birthday. Happy birthday, Mike. Best to, best, best to you, uh, all the best to you and your family, Chris and Marion Illich. I'll get to his uh, hockey arena plan. I'll touch on his hockey arena plans even later in the show. But first things first, the weekend review of the Home Run Derby as I just mentioned before, Jonas Cespedes of the Oakland Athletics won his second consecutive home run derby championship after beating a surging Tim Frazier of the Cincinnati Reds by the score of nine home runs to one in Minneapolis. A couple other derby competitors that proved to make it more competitive were Giancarlo Stanton of the Miami Marlins, who, who hit a 5-10 foot bomb to the top of the third deck in left field and almost entirely out of target field. Wow, I saw that. And I was like, oh my gosh, he hit it almost out of target field. Wouldn't it be historic if, if anyone actually did that? And, and Jose Bautista of the Toronto Blue Jays, who had a whopping 10 home runs in that first round, and thus was the only home run to, to reach double digits in any round in that contest. There were also a couple other contestants who were flat out flat, Yasiel Puig of the Los Angeles Dodgers didn't hit any home runs in the first round. Ouch! And former twin and current member of the Colorado Rockies, Justin Morneau, hit only two home runs in the first in the first round, only to make it to a swing off and come up with a bagel. On Tuesday, the All Star Game itself. The American League beat the National League again 5-3 to three to claim home field advantage in the World Series. Mike Trout of the Los Angeles a Angels of Anaheim became their MVP, coming up with an RBI triple and an RBI double, and perhaps a bit more. Derek Jeter of the New York Yankees got a single, a double, and a run in, in his last ever All-Star game. And Detroit and Tigers first baseman Miguel, Cac Miguel Cabrera, of course, hit a two-run home run in the first inning, but went one for three. He was the only player in that game to hit a home run. Starting pitcher Max Scherzer pitched the fifth inning and only gave up a double to Troy Tulowitzki of the Rockies, but struck out two batters to keep the, keep the game tied at three at that point, and he would, he would eventually get the win in that contest. He was the first Tiger to get a win in an All-Star game since Jim Bunning in 1957. Second baseman Ian Kinsler didn't do anything at the plate, but made the final out of the game on a ground ball. Moving on to Friday, the Tigers open up 
opened up a four-game series with the Cleveland Indians. Indians took the first game 9-3. to Victor Martinez made his return to the lineup going 2-4 for four with two singles and a run. That's all. Not bad, but not good enough. The Tigers took a 3-0 lead early in the game on a sack fly by Miguel Cabrera, who later stole his first base of the season and since July 7, 2013. A Torrey Hunter double and a throwing error on a steal at third by Hunter, allowing him to score. Anibal Sanchez pitched a flawless, a flawless six innings, allowing only three hits, but then he really tailed off in the seventh inning, leaving his pitches in the strike zone instead of sinking them down low like he did the first six innings. He gave up a single, a walk, and another single before Nick Swisher would put the Tribe on the board with a two-run single and nobody out. Pinch hitter Ryan Rayburn, the next batter, would tie it with a bloop double down the right field line off of a struggling relief pitcher Ian Kroll who faced only one, only that one batter. That was Rayburn's 500th career hit by the way. He, fin he finished with two doubles and that RBI. Al Albuquerque would come on and strike out Jan Gomes and Chris Dickerson but he then hung an 0-2 slider to Jason Kittness who took him deep for a three-run home run to right to give the Indians a 6-3 lead and that would prove to be the dagger. Four of those ones would be tar uh, charged to Sanchez, who took an obvious loss. Albuquerque then gave up another home run to shortstop as Jubal Cabrera. Kittness is the Indians' second baseman, by the way. That's back-to-back -back homers by Kittness and Cabrera, as Jubal Cabrera. That made, that made a seven-run seventh inning, and, th and thus a 7-3 to three score. Phil Coke gave up a double in, in the eighth, but that was it. Chad Smith gave up two runs in the ninth inning, including another Kittness homer, a solo shot, and a Swisher RBI ground rule doubled to, to left down the line, making it 9-3, to three, and that's how it ended. The game, that game showed an example of why the Tigers are in so desperate need of much better relief pitching assistance. They could use anybody, not just Benoit or Soria, Joaquin Benoit or Soria. I'm going to get to that, those in a minute. It, there's Papelbon. There's, uh, 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 that's all I could, there's all I could look at. The Tigers were not interested in Houston Street, by the way. Saturday, the, the doubleheader. Indians took game one, six to two. Uh, Drew Verhagen was called up by the Tigers earlier the past week and gave up three runs in game one and took the loss but pitched well. That's just beginner's luck there. Going to game two, Max Scherzer hung two curveballs against Chris Dickerson, a former Baltimore Oriole who took him deep twice and suffered neck, spasm, neck spasms throughout the game but is expected to make his next his next start. He got a no decision, by the way, because because uh, of the Austin Jackson RBI triple that tied the game at two in the seventh, but then Joe Nathan... Gave up a time-breaking three-run double to Carlos Santana in the ninth inning after loading the bases. And that's exactly how it would end. 5-2 to two in Game 2. Going to Sunday, Drew Smiley was up, and was up on the mound starting. He uh, going into that game, he he was uh, just flat out struggling. He was just flat out awful. But he but today he pitched much better. He went seven innings, gave up four hits, walked two, and struck out six. He only gave up a, he only gave up a solo shot in the seventh. Joe Nathan pitched a much better ninth inning and shut up uh, shutting up uh, shutting the tribe offensive uh, shutting the tribe offense down in order after the Tigers got an insurance run in the eighth on a double by Nick Castellanos. Ian Kinsler opened the scoring in the first inning with a single scoring Austin Jackson from second. And and then scored on two fly ball outs by Miggy and V-Mart, Victor Martinez. Torrey Hunter hit a two-run homer to left and 
to left field to extend the lead to 4-0 in the middle frames. Jabba the Bear Chamberlain continued his magic by pitching another 1-2-3-8 inning. Earning his, ninth, uh, his 19th hold of the season, most in the majors. And that's exactly how their week would end. With a sweet taste of victory. Now, let's get to a fi our my first ever fan feedback segment. The fans are the fans in general are really urging the Tigers to get lots of bullpen help, and I agree with them all on that. It looks like Dave Dombrowski might have to fire on all cylinders for just that, but starting with both Joaquin Benoit and Joaquin Soria. Keep in mind, I also still want to trade for a real fifth starting pitcher so Drew Smiley can be moved back to the bullpen, unless he can continue his magic like he did, to, like he performed earlier. He performed earlier today. Heard from some other fans in the Facebook group, Detroit Tigers, that Joaquin Benoit was known for giving up that game time grand slam in game two of last year's ALCS to David Ortiz, but that's all they can bring up. They assume that he's not that good. Well, if you, well, people, if you look at his stats this year, you can, you can tell that he's doing a lot better. Or, well, or maybe a little better, but most certainly he's not giving up any game time grand slams like the one he did last year. Come on, are you kidding me? Jeez, that that that's just silliness. That I, that I was hearing earlier tonight. Knock it off. I want to touch on Joe Nathan a little bit here. Last night in Game 2, in the ninth inning, Joe Nathan was grunting during his delivery on about every pitch in that ninth inning. And I'm only talking about that game. Just that one ninth inning. In that single game. I'm not talking about his entire year. I know his numbers are not that good, as he, especially not as ERA. Very high and that's what a real closer cannot have, trying to, to try to help his team win. But you know something? When, I, when Fox Sports 1 auditioned the grunting, and they did a good job on that, too. They did a heck of a great job. I was thinking that either he might be suffering an aging injury or he might be just overthrowing. To say the least, I, I would think he was just overthrowing. And that, if, if you fans want to put it this way, want to play, keep playing the blame game that that way, that that's understandable too. I thought I thought that something could have been physically wrong with him either way could have been a possible injury or he's just overthrowing like I just said but I heard from an article today on MLive.com that the Tigers are looking to replace Nathan but not too soon though if that's what you Tigers fans really want also the also besides him the Tigers pop gun offense is not hitting fundamentally they are not being patient at the plate and they're going after pitches well out of the strike zone instead of going after pitches in the strike zone. It doesn't matter if it's a fastball, curveball, slider, change of any, or sinker, or knuckleball, or what, or whatever, a split finger. Whatever happened to, that, to, to such a pitch called the screwball? I missed that. Plus, they're taking too many pitches that are too close to take. Which could lead to judgment call to too many judgment calls by by the home plate umpire. I still want to recommend the K zone detection device, which he doesn't have to. Which again, he doesn't have to check every every pitch. He can only check it when the pitcher, manager, or catcher or batter requests it. So 
so the game doesn't take as long as you the game doesn't take as uh, nearly as long as you think but those pitches were but again they're taking too many pitches that are too close to take especially when they're they have important scoring threats occurring and that sets Tigers fans off everywhere that's it for the opinion points segment I forgot to mention that before I touched on Joe Nathan. I'll, I'll, I'll t- touch a little more on Joe Nathan. I apologize for that. Fire up the fired up segment. As a starting pitcher, no matter how how tired you are, you have to stick with your your pitch command and velocity in the late innings. Don't give out and throw Swiss cheese to the hitters in late innings. Drew Smiley showed all starting pitchers how it was done today. Also, I'm hearing some of you fans that, that they're saying that nothing matters until the second half of the season. It, it just keeps coming on and on and on. You're right. That's exactly what I don't want to hear. Because that's not the case. I want to add something else on to this. Oh, before I do, I'm going to support. I'm going to support my disagreement with some of you people that are saying nothing matters until the second half of the season. Everything matters all season long. That's why you stick to your teams. Twenty four seven, three sixty five. Every single game, you got to follow along and watch at the same time. Or, wh- or whether you watch and listen to the games at, at anywhere you are, you got to follow along. You got to look around. You got to look more around sports. Because if you abandon it, then you're not considered a fan. You're not considered a you're not considered a knowledgeable fan. Now I can add something else to this fired up segment, the home run derby. I've been hearing from some of the Detroit sports the Detroit sports media that the home run derby should be eliminated from Major League Baseball just because it means nothing. It's still fun! I don't know how else to react to that, but you guys dislike all fun saying things like that. Those people sound a lot more boring than they think the Home Run Derby in the NHL and NBA All-Star Games and the NFL, NFC, AFC Pro Bowl are, in general. There were thousands in attendance at Target Field watching the Derby and having tons of fun in the process. You people don't want to have fun? Then don't! See if anyone else cares. But realize it that in the world of that, that the world of sports at its entirety never comes without fun. Never. You're supposed to have fun with it. Looking to the week ahead, the Tigers go back out west and take on the struggling Arizona Diamondbacks in a three-game set. Mondays and Tuesdays games start at 9:40, and Wednesdays starts at 3:40. The Diamondbacks understandably are in last place in the NL West and then the Tigers visit the surging Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim in a four game series the Angels have the second best record in the majors only behind the Oakland Athletics both the Athletics and Angels are are in such a cat fight for that AL West lead and, and the and the AL West division title. It's quite incredible how many wins both those teams each have collected. Thursdays and Fridays contests begin at 10.05. Saturday's game opens up at 9.05 and Sunday's game throws its first pitch at 3.35. Then the Tigers have next Monday off 
and then return home for a six-game homestand starting next Tuesday against the White Sox and Rockers, uh, Rockies, Colorado Rockies, uh, against the Chicago White Sox and Colorado Rockies before heading to New York in the Bronx to play the Yankees for the first time this season in a four-game set. They play the Yankees again at home on Tuesday, August 26th through Thursday, August 28th. Oh, and didn't I mention that? Didn't I ever mention the Tigers will have a crack at serious revenge from 2012 in the World Series when they play the San Francisco Giants Friday this September 5th through Sunday September 7th? Oh man, I can't wait for that. Right now the standings, the Tigers are at 54 and 41. They lead the second place Indians at 50 and 48 by five and a half games and the third place 48 and 49 Kansas City Royals by seven games flat. Casey got swept by the Red Sox in Boston this weekend. For the entire standings and all the scores in Major League Baseball, visit MLB.com or download the MLB.com at that mobile smartphone app like I'm usually doing. Tigers source feed. Victor Martinez will likely see more time at first base in the Arizona Diamondbacks series in Arizona at Chase Field. He played first base earlier today and Cabrera was the DH. But that means if the Tigers needed Miguel Cabrera so badly in that series, they would move him to third base, although he's having a rough year. They need Miguel Cabrera to step up and turn it up a few notches and, and be the Miguel Cabrera he used to be. He's still got it in him right now. I know that. He's still got a lot left in him. Other Tigers news. Outfielder Andy Dirks experienced soreness in his back over the weekend and was, and was recalled from rehab back to the 15-day disabled list. Most of the media claimed it was a setback. What are they talking about? But manager Brad Osmus said it wasn't, and I agree with him. That, 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 that can happen in all rehabs. When you have a lot, when, it, when a player has a lot to do in at least one game. So maybe they're not really putting him on the DL, in my mind. They're just giving him a, giving him a couple days rest. Listing him as listing him as day to day. You can think of, you can even you can think of it that way too. Uh, Dirk still won't be out for too much longer either way. The Tigers are also interested in trading for relief pitcher Joaquin Soria, and Joel Hanrahan, another relief pitcher with his elbow, was transferred to the 60-day disabled list on Saturday just to make room for the entire roster. But but that and that does not mean that you will be out for the for the rest of the season. I'm just letting you know in case somebody would say that ahead of time. Other Detroit sports updates. The Lions have signed free agent off at offensive lineman Garrett Reynolds from the Atlanta Falcons and running back George Wynn. They'll put him on They'll put Wynn on the practice squad, I assume. They released DJ Morrell and DJ Shugarts to make room for those two veterans. Reynolds, a, Reynolds at age 27, a former fifth-round draft pick, spent the last four years with the Dirty Birds. He's played in 42 career games with 42 career games with 23 starts, including 10 last year. He will compete with Rob Sims, Travis Swanson, and Rodney Austin for a spot on the roster in training camp at Allen Park. Wynn, a Southfield native, rushed for 1,334 yards as a senior in, at Cincinnati with the Bearcats in 2012. He went undrafted last year and spent time on the practice squads in Oakland, Pittsburgh, and Dallas. Moving on to hockey. The Red Wings re-signed Mitch Callahan and Andre Nestrosil each to a one-year deal, and then they are also in the waiting wings, the waiting process 
pardon me, with restricted free agents Tomas Tatar and uh, uh, left winger Tomas Tatar and defenseman Danny DeKaiser. Plus, birthday man Red Wings owner Mike Illich has revealed his plans for the team's new arena. If you take you take a look at the photos and read the article all about it, you'll be amazed at when you see the the top dome. Oh my goodness, it does more than glow in the dark. It's brighter than fireworks, isn't it? <laughs> Moving on to the basketball court. The Pistons and Sacramento Kings have continued their talks about moving Josh Smith in a sign-in trade. The trade it has recently considered been considered now not imminent, according to the score.com. And and uh, that's not a good feeling. I know how we all feel about that one. But uh, anyway, that does it for this week's Tigers edition of Taylor's Detroit Sports Show. I'm Taylor Phillips. I'll be back next Sunday at 11 p.m. Until then, TTFN, ta-ta for now.